Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary, and I'm a professional tarot, astrologer, and intuitive. It's so good to be back here. For those of you guys that don't know, I was working on my comprehensive astrology and intuitive guide to 2021, which I finally finished, and the feedback has been absolutely amazing. I'm so blown away by the comments, the emails that I've received, and how helpful it's already been for you for those of you guys that haven't seen it yet it's truly you know a work of art for me when it comes to um, sharing my intuitive visions and predictions for all of 2021 broken down into the week broken down into each of the new and full moon cycles and the the prophetic messages and visions that is I'm having for each of those so far and then I have guides astrology guides and reference guides that you can use in order to make the most out of this year which was my intention for the for the guide if you are interested you can check the links down below and download it quick and easy. I'll have those linked for you for sure. Uh, I think it's also so awesome because I was working on a major project, which I can't share with you yet, but it is huge. And the timing, always the timing, divine timing is so magical and always present, not only in my life, but in your life too. So I'll be sharing that with you guys as it's finished, as it's completed, but hopefully around you know, March time. We'll see what happens. But like I was saying, we're going to be talking about the new moon that's happening in the sign of Aquarius. Now, Aquarius rules social media, the internet, networking, innovating, doing things differently, revamping how you do things. And at the time of this new moon, which is today, it's February 11th, is the time that, is that I'm filming, that I'm sharing this video with you guys. I feel like I'm going to be re-entering back into the world of sharing my predictions more publicly again back on the internet, on YouTube. So the timing again is just so awesome. So, so awesome. All right. So first things first, my loves, what's standing out to me is, of course, the fact that this new one is happening with the sign of Aquarius. So as I was saying, Aquarius is really about innovating revelation. It's about human rights. It's about connecting with the community, connecting with the world not just your intimate community but I say community in the work in the realms of those outside of yourself those outside of your close-knit um, core groups and the ways that we do this are through travel of course but also through social media through the internet through networking and when what we've been dealing with up until this point with all of the planets were originally crowded in the sign of Capricorn everything was so tight everything was so rigid and we were so confined and challenging our rules and our foundation and those who tell us what to do and the thing that is that we accept because in our brain we think okay well this is the way that it's always been so this is the way that it always has to be well, not anymore, right? So last year and the year before that, as Pluto was moving through the sign of Capricorn, which I know I sound like a broken record, no one's complained about it so far, but it's because these energies, they don't shift and change overnight. I wanna give everything to you. So as Pluto was moving through the sign of Capricorn and still is, and the planets originally were crowded in the sign of Capricorn, these foundations and these rules that we've accepted for ourselves and our government, our politics, our relationships, our businesses, our brands, we start to really challenge them and as we challenge them we start to break them down or there are circumstances events that are outside of our control that the planets will work to break down so that we cannot continue to stay in a, in that state of being that doesn't serve us for the long-term vision capricorn is highly concerned with stability it's highly concerned with structure and if it feels or the energy within that situation whether it be your relationship your business your health whatever if it's not solid if it's not stable if it's not healthy and conducive to longevity the planets will be the first thing to pick it up and then work to move it and switch it and revamp it and that can really be challenging if you are so set in your way or if you're very rigid in your thinking or very rigid in your beliefs because no matter what you try and do, <laughs> no matter how hard you try, the planets are always going to move things into the, the right place that they're meant to be in or the place where they energetically fit. 
the planets don't say, oh, this is right, this is wrong, because the planets are working with energy. They read energy. They just say, this is not a perfect fit. This is not a, a fit that is conducive and healthy, so it will, over time, corrode it, if that makes any sense. Let me know down in the comments if this makes any sense. So, what does this have to do with the Aquarius new moon? Well, new moons are times where we are planting seeds of intention, where we are sitting in the void, we're sitting in the emptiness, we are sitting in the potential. I talk about this a lot in my Sacred Circle Tarot School, where, you know, what is this emptiness, this void, and the potential? What do we do with the potential? We sit with it, we, we allow ourselves to be inspired by it, and we go into those darkened spaces within ourselves, the quiet spaces within ourselves, and we open our, our third eye to receive this higher vision that spirit, the divine, our higher selves, our ascended masters is trying to inspire within us. What is happening at the time of the Aquarius new moon, which is happening at 2.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for those of you guys that are curious, is we have, are definitely saying goodbye to the old way, the old world, the old state of being, and being, re, and being introduced into this new world, new way of living, new life, new mindset, new perspective. At the time of the new moon, we have a, 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 a I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'm trying to, you know, watch, watch what I say. But we have a lot, the majority of the planets are crowded in the sign of Aquarius, and Aquarius, it wants to do differently. Aquarius is ruled by, co-ruled by Saturn and Uranus. Uranus wants to innovate. It will totally revamp everything that is that it touches in ways that can be really shocking and um, surprising to our system or surprising to our eyes. And this is why it's so important to remain flexible, to remain open to this process. As I'm saying this, Mercury is retrograde and Mercury rules communication. It rules our thought. It rules how the messages that we receive and the words it is that we say. It also rules our intention, the power of our intention, the power of word. And as Mercury is retrograde, moving through Aquarius, moving backwards in the sign of Aquarius, this is inviting in totally new ways of thinking, even as it's retrograde. Yes, when, when Mercury is retrograde, it can cause troubles, things that slow us down, things like people's tires blowing out, cars breaking down, information and technology getting lost. If you're normally really sharp with your words, you might be stumbling, saying ums and uh, like a lot of those things. They, it really can slow you down. But what it's trying to do is invite in intention. It's trying to reveal to you weak points within your delivery or weak points within your world that need to be addressed so that when, when push comes to shove and you actually need it, and the lights camera action is on you, that you're able to deliver, you're able to show up. In order to do that, you have to take care of what you need to take care of now so that in the future, you're, you're, you're ready. It's prime time. I can see that there are gonna be a few people who are going to be revisiting and revamping these ultimate higher vision game plans that is that they are seeing for themselves. These are the same areas of your life, mark my words, these are the same areas of your life that you feel like you've been struggling with the most. These are the same areas that you feel like, regardless of how much energy and effort you're exerting, you keep hitting these blockages and these barriers. It's the Aquarius new moon that says, listen, I hear you, I see you, I feel you, don't take it personally, but now is the time to revisit those same thoughts, revisit the plan, get organized, get proactive, and do differently, think differently. The other thing that comes through with this is connecting with social media, connecting with your internet presence, connecting with the community, connecting with the world. Some of you guys are really going to be revisiting the idea of civil rights, human rights, advocacy, and those types of things. This is the time to honor those feelings and honor that pull, that higher pull. The other thing that was coming through years ago, and if you are an old fan of Bahati Life or an old follower of Bahati Life channel, the YouTube channel, you remember me saying this, that what happens over there impacts us here. All of us are connected. This idea of, okay, their problem is their problem. It's not my problem. It's not, the world is gonna shrink. I said that a long time ago. The world will shrink if we see that there are civil rights issues going on across the seas. 
you better believe that they're gonna come over here or that there's there's a connection between the two. There's some things too that I wanna talk to you guys about is politics and government. We are going to start seeing new, new energy within global leaders. These are gonna be the underdog and I did talk about this. There is going to be a, a, um, a revealing of a new type of leader that is totally different than what our world has ever really experienced before. And I'm putting a pin in it. I talked about it in my comprehensive guide to astrology for those of you guys that have downloaded it. I don't know what page it is on there. There's literally under just under 200 pages in, in that book um, of written scripts of what is it you can expect. But there is this initiation of what it is that I, what I intuitively could see of this new type of leader that is completely unexpected to say the very least. And that energy, that appearance is not just going to be in that one area with that, with that leader. We're going to see it inspired in other leaders where they take inspiration or they take this revelation thought, this revelation in thought and apply it to how they serve and how they protect the people, the, the public. So keep an eye out for that. When it comes to your personal life, because there's some cautionary tales that it is I want to share with you guys, some warnings that it is that I can see. You guys know I'm very thorough in my predictions. Um, wow, as I'm even looking at this, I'm not totally seeing that I have the Knight, the King of Swords, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Hierophant. So this is already showing me that. We are definitely getting some major shifts with masculine energy, leadership, politics, government, business. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So what I'm seeing in our personal lives, in your personal life, your intimate life, is we want to look at <clears throat> revelation, revolutionizing the areas of your life that have been stagnant, that are struggling, that you know within your heart, soul, and spirit, you know, this is not meant to be this way. You're meant to be prosperous. It meant, it's meant to be flowing. It's not meant to be this barren state of being. Every aspect of your life shouldn't be barren. It should be lush. It should be thriving. You want to look at your astrology chart. You want to look at your natal chart and see where this new moon in Aquarius is happening. Some of you guys, it's happening in the first house of self. That's something that I really want to talk to you guys about is this idea, especially with Chiron moving through the sign of Aries and the North Node sitting in the sign of Gemini. This idea of I am. I'm definitely seeing, and this is not just for those who have the Aquarius, the new moon in Aquarius happening in their first house of self or on the ascendant. I'm definitely seeing a change in how you present yourself to the world. I'm seeing this energy of reflection. You have to see be open to seeing how you come across. You have to be you have to be open to seeing where you have made mistakes, where you have been how where you've rubbed people the wrong way. Why? Because you want to make sure that you're harmonizing with the right things, with the right people, and with your higher purpose. If you have it in your mind, remember new thought. If you have it in your mind that your way is the right way, you're, you're already too rigid that there's nothing about you that needs to change, it's rigid. This doesn't mean that you have to change these core elements of your character. It's, t it's showing you that there's certain aspects within yourself that are stagnant, that are not serving you, and you have to sit with that, look at that, observe it, and be open to seeing how to do differently so that you can actually go further, so that you can serve your higher purpose. That's real rap raw. Some of you guys are gonna hear that, get triggered by it, and be like, well, I don't need to change anything about you. Fine. It's not my job, it's not my duty to convince you to do anything. At the end of the day, you're on the on listening to me today to see what it is that I have for you as far as intuitive messages as I pull the charts, as I pull the cards, and this is the message that's coming through. The other thing is your relationships, right? So we have the I am, and then we want to talk about the other. Relationships. There are aspects within your relationships, intimate relationships, personal relationships, or those who you're trying to partner with. You wanna look at where you're pointing the finger. You wanna look at the problems of the relationship or you know areas of the relationship that have grown stagnant, that have been outgrown, and you don't want to ignore those stations. You don't want to ignore those problems. You don't want to ignore that. 
you want to sit with it, address it, and breathe life into it. At the time of the new moon in Aquarius, this is about revolutionizing, thinking differently, and bringing in new life, new energy into the areas of your life that have become too stagnant, too boring, too complacent. They're, over time, those small problems or those small issues are going to become bigger, way bigger. The other thing is, so we're talking about intimate. What about the community? There are people out in the world or people who are watching you on the internet or on social media or the public, whatever that means for you. And the truth is, is that watch the words. What are they saying? What are they saying about you? Now, to be honest with you, you can't control rumors. You can't control gossip. You can't control what other people say. And sometimes it's not your place to speak up and say anything at all. But other times there comes a time and a place where you might have to be called to address it. Why? Because you're not a punching bag. Why? Because you need to be respected. Why? Because those types of things should not be allowed. And even if you, even if you saying something doesn't shut it all up, it's the fact that you've made a clear boundary that says that this is not allowed. I do not accept that. I do not accept this. It changes the, the it changes the, the dialogue. It changes the conversation, and that is important to be had. Yes, it's true that you can't control what other people are saying, what other people are doing, but you can at least make it clearly known that this is off limits and that you do not accept it. And that does make a difference. So, you know, that's what it is that I'm seeing here, a lot of that. Also, there's things happening in the home environment where there are aspects within the home that do not serve you, that do not feel good for you, and you have to break free from it. I'm really seeing at the time of this new moon, the universe coming in and in creating friction. And what's showing me this is the knight, the king of swords, and the Hierophant here. The King of Swords, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the King of Swords speaks up and speak, has to speak up or knows to speak up sometimes in things that may feel uncomfortable or that may, may be against their emotional feelings, right? The King of Swords knows that there has to be certain boundaries that are set, set into motion that are, that are clearly defined that sometimes can make you feel sad to say it, angry to say it, Frustrated that you have to say it. Disappointed that we're even here. But the King of Swords puts those emotional feelings aside and says that it's important and and a part of you know me respecting myself and them respecting my boundaries. This is where I draw the line. And why is this so important? Because the Hierophant is establishing this new order in your life, in your career, in your relationships. And to me, that is everything. The next cards that I pulled for us are the Seven of Pentacles. This is the card of, observ of observation, seeing things, and kind of tweaking, okay, what else do I need to do? What else do I need to hear? What is working for me? What is not serving me? And at the very bottom of this uh, tarot deck, I have the Two of Swords for us. And the Two of Swords, is about emotionally and mentally disconnecting so that you can plug in to this intuitive third eye vision of what spirit the divine has for you in your life. What this is showing me is that at the time of the Aquarius new moon, you have to totally disconnect from your feelings, from the mental logic, all of that in order for you to tune into this higher plan. Aquarius is the biggest gift and blessing when it comes to that because Aquarius is the master of it. Aquarius is not only ruled by the rev this uh, revolutionary planet Uranus, but it's also ruled by the rules and restrictions of Saturn. That's, 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 that's true. Why this is so significant and important and meaningful is because it's showing you. It's, and it's giving you permission to work with both of those elements of your world in order to create a foundation in order to create a new foundation that is better serving of you, your relationships, your health, your friendships, and so on and so on. This new moon is truly, truly magical, if you ask me. There is something I wanna to talk to you guys about with, and I talked about this on my Instagram. If you're not following me, you can follow me at Bahati Life. What I was talking about there and what was intuitively so clear to me was the issue of boundaries and, uh, 
this is for me this is coming through with the neptune neptune moving to the sign of pisces neptune and pisces can really break, bring out the very highest vision and the highest vibration of human beings at the same time it can bring out the very low of the low if you think about the ocean which neptune rules there is treasure in the ocean and there are some dank dank dark animals that and mysteries that are hidden in the ocean that honestly should be left alone you know some of you guys think about okay well everything needs to be discovered everything needs to be seen everything needs to be dressed and that is simply not the case that's why the universe the divine created boundaries some things should be off limits some things should be left alone and when neptune moved into the sign of pisces this is when we started seeing this higher vibration of human beings but at the same time it triggers these individuals who are very deceptive you would think that's how deceptive it is you would think by the words that they're using and the things that they're saying that their intention is good that they are healers that they are intuitives that they are gifted that they are pure with their intention but you you have to be the one to sit with the energy and sit with how it makes you feel and decide okay this is actually something that is toxic or this doesn't feel good for me the same people it almost is reminding me of i think there's a verse a, a quote in the bible that says you know uh, it talks about springs like you know dirty water and pure water can't come from the same spring or something something similar to like that you have to be very aware of where what is coming from the spring of this thing from this person from this career from this lifestyle these habits as that you're choosing they you can't have you know toxic and healthy coming from the same thing because and and then expect it to always be a pos a, a good result a healthy result why because they're muddled as as human beings you know we have to be very have grace with ourselves and not expect perfection but the intention behind it what is the intention behind it really sit with your intuition they're like i said they're they're the same time where we have people who are coming from the highest vibrations or being called into the highest vibrations there are going to be people who are actively fighting it actively saying okay I'm going to see that this is trending. I'm going to see that other people are doing this and I'm going to influence it. What is that influence that they are putting off? That's the very, that's what I will say on that. Let me pull some cards for us. Yes. Wow. Okay. Okay. We need another layer here. The first three cards that are jumping, that are coming out for me and for us are the page of pentacles the knight of cups and the eight of swords what this is showing me is you want to focus on your investments you want to focus on your feelings you want to focus on the things that is that are going to pay off for you you don't want to focus on things that paralyze you you don't want to focus on the things that cripple you and by that i mean you don't want to enable them by allowing them to call the shots for you, for your life, for your investments, for your growth, for your health, for your well-being. If you are to focus on them, it's going to be about addressing those wounds and working to heal them, but you don't want to hyper-focus or overly fo focus on tending to them all the time because there are investments and new doors that are opening for you that are trying to usher you into new realms. It's going to make you, um, the word is, uh, curious and cautious that's the intuitive words that are coming through they're curious and cautious it will make you feel nervous it will make you feel uncomfortable but there's a curiosity there's an intuitive curiosity that's pulling you emotionally into new realms that is going to pay off in the long run this is not just financial abundance this is not just not only opportunities for you know networking and growth of your business but it's your health, it's your relationships, it's new avenues and areas of growth mentally, it's new practices, spiritual practices that are going to serve you and bring you into this higher vibration. It will initially test your comfort level, but if you have an intuitive curiosity to explore it, go with it. Definitely always follow your intuition. Next card, we have, this is so powerful, 
Ten of Swords, Three of Swords, and the Justice card. This is spirit totally acknowledging the fact that the things that, have, that, is, that have happened in your life, please do not take them personally. Remember, we are all working with energy. Energy is neither good nor bad. It just is what it is. The problem becomes when we take on those, those things that have, come, that have happened to us, we take them personally and we say, what could I have done differently? What could I have done better? How could I have avoided that? Sometimes it is the unavoidable. It has nothing to do with you, what you, you did do or you didn't do. Sometimes the best lovers find themselves in the wrong situations with the wrong people. And you just don't want to take on that baggage. You, you, want to, you want to not bury it, but lay it to rest. And again, move forward knowing that these repeating cycles, these repeating patterns, they don't have to occur. They don't have to happen again. That there are new people, new things, new circumstances that are out there for you that will treat you better. But you don't want to take those, again, like I said, you don't want to take those old issues those old memories and apply them into the present it has to be a fresh spring it has to be a fresh source it has to be a fresh life and spirit is saying again we're acknowledging the fact that it will be difficult we are acknowledging the fact that it could be triggering we're acknowledging the fact that it it will be uncomfortable but if there is an intuitive curiosity and if you intuitively know that there is more out there for you that there are new people and new situations for you to explore, go with it and go with a full heart and go with potential, with the stars in your eyes. The next thing that is that I'm seeing, wow, you guys, two of wands, king of cups, and eight of pentacles. This is you, the, the spirit is giving you full permission in order to call the shots on what you are going to create for yourself. It's going to feel solid, it's going to feel emotionally stable, and it's going to feel emotionally fulfilling. Set intention for those things in your life. Definitely set intention for those things in your life. Mars is moving through the sign of Taurus. Uranus is moving through the sign of Taurus. And for those of you guys that don't remember, I talked about this when I was like, watch how the, the power of the dollar starts to shift and change or how money starts to shift and change. Stocks, stock, the stock market is going to shift. I literally said years ago, a year and a half ago no I think longer than that the stock market it's gonna go from those who are have been always been in positions of power to those who are have been taken advantage of the stock market and literally I've been watching um, you know memes on on Instagram and I've been watching the news talking about the shift in the stock market from these people who are empowered and rich and pulling from that source to those who are brand new or those who shouldn't be successful, those that the system is actually working against them or taking from them, those are the people that are gonna start shooting up. And if you, some, I have some clients that have been coming to me for years when it comes to business planning, when it comes to working with their finances, when it comes to planning their, their public figures. So they, they work with me in order to plan their moves when it comes to taking on new projects when to speak out to the media, those types of things. And all of these things were what I've been watching with Uranus and Mars moving through the sign of Taurus. This is about, you really wanna play your cards, cards right with this, okay? You really wanna check your intention. Those who shouldn't be in positions of power, those who shouldn't be prosperous for the, from this are going to swing into, into power, into money, into finances, into resources. Mark my words, it's going to be the underdog. That's as far as I can say. For those of you guys who want to dive into more of my predictions, my visions, those intuitive prof prophetic uh, messages that are inspired and pulled from the astrology charts and also the tarot, you can uh, look at my uh, comprehensive guide to 2021. It's completed, fully completed, and the links for that will be down below. Um, anybody else, or for those that already have it and for those that aren't interested, that's totally fine, but make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because I, like I said, I'm setting intention that we'll be doing more of these videos and I'm considering bringing back um, Astro Live. Do you guys remember when we used to do that? <laughs> but I was spending so much time working on 
my other projects that I had to kind of put that on hold and also the internet was getting wonky and I pulled my chart and spirit my planets everything was like just put the energy back on you you I had the opportunity I know to skyrocket more during that time but for me from what it was that I could see the 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 negatives of it would have outweighed the positives for me personally so that's one of the reasons why I was like let me honor what the charts are showing for me in my life let me honor what the cards are showing for me in my life and let me honor my intuitive feelings but I'm starting to feel that after a year of me putting Astro Chat Live on hold that I might be revisiting it we'll see so let me know down in the comments and also you guys let me know how you're feeling with all of what's going on with this new moon in Aquarius. How has it resonated with you? What plans are you setting for yourself and your future? Um, you know, as we're pulling the charts, as we're working through this, definitely let me know. And as you put those comments down below, let me know your sun, moon, and rising sign. Definitely your rising sign. These are things that, is that help me to do my research, help me to do my work. I am a student of life. I'm always learning astrology as we go along. I've spent my entire life studying it so far, and I will continue. So you guys' comments really help benefit me and my learning and my growth and my knowledge. So thank you to all of you guys who do leave your comments, who do leave your feedback, and let me know on a personal front, you know, this is what it is that I'm working on, Just This is what I'm setting intention for. These are the areas of my life that I'm struggling with. These are the areas where I'm experiencing, experiencing the most growth. That feedback is everything to me. Until then, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.